When you go to YouTube and you find these beats, it's a type beat. So there's multiple people out there listening to that same thing. And you never know. You could be in Africa. This other person could be in Oklahoma. And you guys make the same exact song. But one thing I can say is that it's L -L Hello fellow bedroom producers, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time seeing me, first of all, my name is El Marquis. I'm a musician, rapper, record producer, unashamed crash follower. I make videos that give advice to independent artists and producers all around the world. I give tutorials on Logic Pro 10. I make videos that break down my beat making and songwriting process, and also I do product reviews. So if any of that interests you, I need you to do me a really quick favor. Go down, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications, so that way you'll be notified whenever I make another video like this, and you'll help other people people with similar interests as you see more videos like this. Got that the way? Bet. Let's get into the video. This video is another entry in my series where I interview artists and ask them questions that we ask all the time in the music producer community. This interview is a bit special because not only do I get to interview one of my favorite artists in the DMV, Dean, I also get to interview his primary producer, Vibe for Vibe. So with that being said, here's the interview. There are tons of great gems in here. Go check it out. What's up fellow bedroom producers? Welcome back to the channel. This is a special episode because not only do I have an artist, but also I have another producer. We got Dean over here and we also got Vibe Revive. Say what's up. What's Gucci? Hi. How y'all doing? I make music. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't watched the series before, <laughs> if you haven't watched one of these episodes before, the main purpose of the series is to ask artists questions that we talk about all the time in the producer community. You see, we talk about different things amongst other producers all the time, like how to get artists to buy our beats, or how to get artists to rap on our beats, or to, how to discover us. And we talk about that with other producers, but we don't always take time to actually talk to artists and ask these same questions. So that's the whole purpose of the series. I hope mainly producers as well as even independent artists can get something good out of this. First question, Dean, Vibe, how are you both doing tonight? Fantastic, yo. I feel amazing. Um, Steve? I've, I've never felt better a day in my life, That's honestly. what's up. God, God woke us up today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Tell, tell us about yourself. What got you into music? What do people need to know about you? Oh, man. I, I'll try and keep it brief. I, you know, we'll see how personal we're going to get here. For me, honestly, music was there for me in a time when I had absolutely nothing else. I was a, re, re, the, a very, very low point in my life, probably around when I was 14 or 15 years old. I got kicked out of private school, and I kind of got blacklisted and wasn't able to see a lot of my friends. I had all my technology taken away from me. So I just remember every night I'd be on, uh, at the time, DC 101 and listening to music. And that's really what got me through those times. So that's what drew me to making my own music. I'm about to cry, man. I cried. That was I'll, beautiful. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> For me, I'd have to say I was five years old. Five years old, and I was watching uh, Elton John perform, uh, I think it was Rocket Man? Not sure what song it was. But he was just playing piano. And he had the dopest shades on, and I was like, I want to do that. Like, and then that's what started me to actually like start playing piano. And then um, after I started playing piano, a while I'm like, oh snap, can I sing a little bit? Maybe. Who knows? And so my family does music. Dad plays the trumpet. Mom sings. Brother would rap behind people's backs. He doesn't want anybody to see it, but yes, he does rap, and he's pretty dope. And then I came to Jirani and Manassas, and then these guys got me into it. Like, like I met people like Zoe, and then Steven through Frank the host, because Frank knows everybody and Frank connects everybody, so. That's facts. And yeah. so now Shout I'm here Frank. today making songs with this dude and this dude over here, so that's me. That's me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Describe your sound in five words. I have no idea. That's that's one word. That's but, not fair. You but, took, but you we took, took, took mine. We took the syllables. I have no idea. That's, that's a, okay, syllables. I said words, that's syllables. I know, but I'm I, switching I, it now. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't describe it in five words, but it's like my sound is very unorthodox. Um, it is very. My unorthodox. sound is very unorthodox. My sound is very unorthodox. Oh, I was the only. That's five words. That's, that's, that's five orthodox. words. That's five words right there. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, words. authentic, emotional, poppy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got. Honestly, that's that's all I got. Hey, Amen. That's good. That's good. That's good enough. <laughs> All right, now getting into questions about music production, what is your definition of a music producer? My definition of a music producer is someone who elevates or builds magic, you know what mm. I mean? Like, um, that's very, I feel like that's a very weird answer, but. <laughs> That's my definition. <laughs> definition of a music producer is somebody who calls the shots. Calls the honestly calls the shots and builds the platform for an artist, really. And not just an artist, but also makes the best instrumentals ever. Like there are beat tapes out there that are just absolutely amazing that you don't even need words to. You just 
listen to it. Like they create an atmosphere that people just can't escape and they love and they just want to continue to go back to it over and over again. Oh God, I got so serious so fast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, music producer. Yeah, I definitely say uh, along the lines of, of what you said, someone that, that's able to take an idea and craft it to completion. So really it's about telling a story and there's a big difference between a song that is you know, just a song and a song that really tells something from, from start to finish and has a purpose. So part of a, a music producer is being able to take someone else's story, learn it, get to know them, understand it, and then transcribe that story into music. I love that, I love that. The reason why I ask questions like that is because a lot of producers in, from this generation specifically, we're from the generation where a lot of producers, they really focus on you know putting beats on YouTube and uploading the beats to beat stars. And their only idea of a producer is selling beats to artists, which is not necessarily bad because of course this is a great way to generate income from music. But also I wanna show another side to where producers aren't just salesmen, which I think a lot of us specifically like younger producers like myself and people from this generation, a lot of us can be considered salesmen almost because we're always so focused on selling beats, but also like we really have a job to fulfill, which is taking the artist's vision and or making a reality, which is why I like working with artists like Dean, which is why I know you two have a really strong working relationship because you're not just simply sending it to a beat stars page and telling them to buy beats. Like you both work together, uh, craft things from scratch and then actually create magic together. So you work with a handful of producers, primarily Vibe of course, and you and I work together on a handful of tracks. Fire tracks. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> As an artist, what gravitates you towards working with a producer? Um, regra what gravitates me? I would have to say someone to help me, like he said, to help me tell the story or help me get the argument across of what I'm trying to like say. Like if there's if there's a certain way I'm feeling, like I know there was a song I was working on with Steve a couple weeks ago uh, called The Way Up. And he really brought, I, I, I had these words and I had these ideas and I had this story and I had this point that I wanted to get across, but he just made it 10 times better with like adding intimate things like strings. Like strings really bring a lot of emotion to songs and really put emphasis on the emotion of what that artist is trying to say. So just going to a producer to really fulfill and tell that story, like really write every chapter out. Like it's it's just an amazing thing for overall. And to piggyback, because we were talking about this a little bit before we came here, I think a lot of it has to do with the energy. The energy in a room is is everything. Like before this interview, we were sitting here joking around for like 20 minutes just to kind of let everything let everything down. If you're really trying to get somebody to feel something, you need to be comfortable with feeling it in that space. Mm -hmm. So I think that's definitely a big part of it is the energy in the room. You'll see a lot of videos, for example, of people in the studio and everybody's cranking or like having a good time. And then there might be like one guy in the corner just like this. And I think that's that's one thing that really differentiates when you're an engineer or when you're a producer is when you're a part of the energy in the room. Yeah, so the reason why it's really important to understand that as well is because if you want to work with other artists, of course, or even if you just want to be someone who sells, sells beats, you need to know what your target audience in this case artists are looking for. If you have some idea in your head where maybe, I can't think of a really specific one, but like if you have an idea in your head where maybe you think an artist only wants someone who can provide beats for them, just like literally, literally just the act of beats and nothing else, like no feedback, nothing else in mind, maybe you may be focusing on the wrong thing. But if an artist is looking for someone to sit down, work with and have them craft out their song or their vision, or maybe if, even if they need some other type of skill, like maybe someone just to guide them through every process of making music, maybe even in some cases things outside of the creation of music like business it's important for us as producers to know what exactly an artist is looking for so that way we can fulfill those needs and of course provide the best service for them possible so when you're looking for a beat to write over what gravitates you to find a beat listen to it and then actually write over it and use it and release it me personally i would have to say like from my own experience when it comes to like writing either write without a beat like I'll do a poem first. I'm like every, I'm all, I'm a lot of my songs are poems before they actually are formed into like actual songs with tracks behind them. And then sometimes if I do write with a beat, it, it doesn't, it's a, it starts with a beat that's just naked. So it'll start with just like a guitar loop or a piano loop or a vocal loop. I love vocal loops, like harmonies that go crazy. So I feel like trying to, f trying to I like building around my own words to give myself my own punctuation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want to give myself, I don't, the the stuff that I put around the words are like my exclamation points or or like my periods or whatever something like that. So I really build emphasis around my words first, and I I, I hate to say it, but I've never like 
Oh, one time, actually, uh, Steve has this dope beat that we made a song called Pisces. It was insane. It's probably the first beat that I've I've heard and I used from somebody else. But like other than that, like I've I've never really like uh, used another one mm. before. So it's always like organic. Like I make it myself or what's. And I'd else. say that's something that that I think we were talking about earlier is that there's there's different lanes that you can be in as a producer exactly. and different target audiences that you can have. There's people that just want to go online and find an instrumental or find something and write over it and they kind of catch the energy off of that and write with it. And then there's also people that maybe, like I had an artist reach out to me the other day and he said, hey, you know, I have this this melody that's in my head or that I, that I play out and I'm having trouble finding something to fit it. It can be really hard for an artist when they already have an idea of where they want to go for exactly. to then find something that really perfectly captures that. And I think that's where you have those two distinct different markets and target audiences as, as a producer. And you can definitely leverage yourself best by trying to have stuff that reaches towards both because they're very different types of people and they have different needs. Like you said, it's, yes. all, it's all about meeting the needs of the artist. So Absolutely. Yeah. One thing, one thing too on that as well, one thing I noticed is that when it comes to like me, like an artist finding a beat, one thing you have to realize is that those beats are out there for people to listen to and write over. But then when you think about that, you have to think, gosh, it's 2021, everybody's trying to make music. So everybody's either trying to make their own music or they're trying to go on YouTube and find the same beat. So the, there's uniqueness in building it yourself. Right. Sometimes, so I mean, if uh, to to and it's hard to stand out because everyone's trying to make music. So I feel like the only way is to be organic yourself. So start from scratch. That's 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 what I would I would do to really get yourself out there. Because when you hear when you hear something, people you don't want people to be like like, oh, I used that before. But I feel like the best thing is like, oh snap, this is weird. Yeah. Like this is weird. I'm never, this is very unorthodox. This is very strange. Like why does he have this set up like this? And it's like I never would have thought somebody else would have done this. So the uniqueness in that is very like intimate, I think, as well. I love that, I love I mean, that. Normally at this point I ask artists how they feel about getting beats specifically off of YouTube, but as we just discussed, you pretty much just create things from scratch or creating it organically most of the time, whether it's by yourself or with another producer. So what would you say to producers who primarily sell beats online or what would you say maybe to an artist who primarily gets their beats off online? Do you think there's any benefit to getting beats off of YouTube? Do you think there are any disadvantages? Do you think there are any advantages or disadvantages of maybe for the most part sticking to getting beats off of BeatStars and, and YouTube? The inspiration most likely is one thing like when you go to youtube and you find these beats it's a type beat yeah so uh sam henshaw type beat or chance the rapper type beat so when you listen to that beat you are going to be influenced by that so there's multiple people out there listening to that same thing and you never know you don't know each other you could be in africa this other person could be in oklahoma and you guys make the same exact song and it's like oh snap I didn't know that, but it's out there. Like you, like you, you missed that. Uh, and you already put so much work into already, writing the song. You already put so much work out. into writing it. But one thing I can say is that it does help, like, blossom that little bubble of creativity in your head. Right. Other than artists, but for producers, I would say it's great to get your work out there. But for me, I would say it's, in some cases, a lost opportunity. Mm. In some, in some points, because one thing I, I don't like. I don't put my music on YouTube because I've noticed how easy it is to download things off of YouTube. So I, I've downloaded beats off of YouTube before and I'm like, oh yeah, I listen to this in the car. Like, you, it, it, you, there's missed opportunities and, and uh, a lot of credit that you're missing out on from mm. putting your beats out there on YouTube. But I mean, BeatStars goes crazy. You definitely get stuff from that. But I know yeah. YouTube is like the, the bank for some people. Another thing that you had mentioned earlier is that when you are putting out your instrumentals, and then somebody is buying them and putting out something on top of them, what you're missing out on partially is your, your own credit, especially if they're buying stems and taking your tag out, um, then you're having a little bit less reach with that uh, because you don't have your name attached to it. Now, that being said, there's a lot of hit songs that had been made off of stuff that was on a YouTube beat. Like Old Town Road, for example, the producer was just on the radio one day and he's like wait that's my song <laughs> but but then that's another thing that that you have to worry about as a producer when you're selling stuff online and me and lorenzo have talked about this issue and how we can try and combat this 
is making sure that you're getting what you're deserved. If they say on BeatStars, the average lease says after you get past a certain point, you're supposed to get royalty percentages, but how are you supposed to track all these people down? And the only reason he was even able to know that he was owed a, in a, this amount of money is because he heard that song on the radio. So you can imagine as a producer that you're missing out on a lot of potential royalties by not working with artists in person, getting the proper credit, and also getting your proper fair share of royalties because you, you know, if Dean puts out a song, I, I know Dean put out a song, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I keep up with Dean. But if I have, you know, 50, 100, 1,000 um, or more people online, then it's really hard to keep up with what's going on with my, with my instrumentals or my music. Mm. So just to give a slightly different uh, perspective, not an argument, of course, but just different perspective. I do a mixture of both. I work with a handful of artists in person, not as many as I used to because of the pandemic, unfortunately. But I, I do, Brittany, Brittany being one of them, Dean being one of them, of course, Nan Perel, artists like them, mm -hmm. a lot of local artists in the DMB that have a lot of talent. So I work with a mixture of local artists, but also artists who I meet online. Sometimes I produce exclusively for them. A lot of the times um, I'm leasing beats for them. And I still put all my beats out on YouTube and my, my website, which I host my beats on, on BeatStars. I pretty much dabble in both, well not dabble, I pretty much focus on both actually, producing specifically for artists, but also putting beats out there available so other people, people can lease. I would say that there definitely is a magic to what you can create with an artist working hands-on. And I definitely can get different vibes from working with someone in person rather than just making a beat and then just putting it on a website. But out of the perspective of an entrepreneur, someone who wants to make a living off of their music, I would still encourage producers and artists to try out different ways to generate the income that they need to continue their, their business. In some cases, it can be leasing, which you can still make some pretty dope music off of putting your beats out there for other artists to use on your website or YouTube, because there are cases where actually I'll upload a beat to, of course, my website as, as well as YouTube. Someone may stumble on it, they may find it actually before someone else gets it, and they'll, they'll purchase it exclusively. So technically, I didn't, well, I didn't make it in the studio with them, but if you're worried about someone maybe taking it, using it, maybe making the same song, even though I put it out there on, on YouTube, YouTube and on my website to where other people could get it. They still got it, made it their own, and did their thing with it. Uh, another thing I would say about that is that it is, it is also really helpful for you as a producer to be exploring your own sound. Yes. And when you're creating for yourself or for your own brand or for your own website or for your beat store, you're really diving into only what you want to do and that can help you get better as a producer and find out what it is you really want, what your lane is, what your niche is, which will then attract more sales as well as potentially more people to work with in person. So it's excellent practice and excellent exposure one way or the other. Absolutely. And it definitely helps you grow as an artist. Absolutely. I, I would say like, cause not everyone doesn't need to do, to do the same thing. Everyone doesn't need to sell beats on BeatStars. Everyone doesn't need to sell beats th through YouTube or TikTok or not, not everyone needs to exclusively work with people in person. Really, there are so many different ways to make money with music that I really just encourage people to actually educate yourselves on all the pros and cons, try out things for yourself, don't go ahead and judge people and assume things without either doing your own research or experiencing it for yourself. And try a bunch of different things and then figure out what works the best for you. I happen to like releasing beats. I also happen to like to work with artists in person. I like both. I do both. I like releasing music as an artist, so I do that as well. So really, at the end of the day, educate yourself on different ways where you can earn revenue as a producer and also different ways that you can connect with different artists. Make sure you know what they're looking for and what they want, and then just make the best decision for yourself as well as the artists who you're, I'm assuming, that you're making music for yeah yeah and definitely definitely different niches and, and different games as long as you're educating yourself on the niche that you're trying to get into you're gonna be great because exactly. they're they're different hustles mm. so the, if you pay attention to different memes and stuff that go on in the producer community a big meme and a big complaint actually I've seen a lot of people producers make is that artists always expect to get beats for free or artists don't pay for beats mm. so as an artist yourself how do you feel about paying producers for beats and as a producer yourself how do you feel about artists paying for beats do you think that all beats should be free do you think that there should be an upfront cost how do you feel about that I think it depends on that is in, I feel like that decision is entirely up to the producer himself. But also, depending on, in certain situations, depending on where you guys both stand, like, um, one thing one thing I like, I, I think it's like a dope way to work together and also build each other up, is that you guys are both in the same struggle. Like, you're trying to get your name out there, I'm trying to get my name out there. Or like, we're, we're both trying to get to this level of success, and we both compliment you guys compliment each other very well so it's like hey i'll pay you but i'm gonna guarantee that i'm gonna like the artist is like i i'll i'll pay you for whatever but i'm gonna guarantee that whatever work we put in together this is gonna get to that level so either either you either i don't know i uh what am i trying to say so 
it could it, there could be no money exchanged, but as long as you both get royalty for what you guys do, that's that's what matters. And as long as the promotion of that project that you guys have done together rises up, and there's some kind of result, yo, like like literally, I'm working with Steven, and I'm not rich, guys. Like I'm broke. Like I I need gas money. We do be struggling. We do here. we really Scooby do be struggling out here. <laughs> so like so like literally we're both in the same struggle of like trying to be successful at music, which is something we're both passionate about. So it's like we're gonna work our butts off to get to that level of success. So then like five year plan down the road, five years down the road, I w I'll be giving him five hundred dollars for like no reason. I don't know. <laughs> like <laughs> if we get to that level of success where we can like start complimenting each other like oh hey Dean I just got you this dope mic that we can start recording on or I'll be like hey Steve here's two hundred dollars for this new equipment that we can get we need a new interface or I don't know I know it, interfaces are not two hundred dollars but <laughs> they're, they're, like five, they're like five <laughs> they really good interfaces aren't two hundred dollars yeah, they yeah, really are not two hundred dollars good ones are but like I feel like if you guys are both in that same struggle and you want to make a name for yourself you you don't have to unless it depends on the I'd say to, the to piggyback. To piggyback, yeah. To, go ahead, to go piggyback, piggyback on that, I, I think it's an exchange of value. And as long as you feel like you're getting your fair share in this in this exchange, then sometimes it's going to be paid and sometimes it's not. And it really depends on you know what you're getting from it. So you could get uh, two hundred dollars now, or three hundred, or four hundred, or a thousand, or whatever your price is. I know some people charging up to two thousand for custom productions. You could get this money now, or you could potentially get something and use that money towards pushing it, and then get more recognition and more movement for both of you. That depends on your needs and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Maybe you already have enough traction yourself. Maybe you already have a store that's doing well. Maybe you already have a channel that's doing well, a brand that's doing well. Maybe you don't need that. Great. Uh, then, then only take paid. Uh, so it just depends on what you're trying to get from it and as long as you're getting something from it You feel like you're moving forward You're not being used in any type of situation and that things you know, you're not doing anything that you don't want to do Then I see there's no problem in doing it for free, especially if you enjoy the collaboration process But at the same time, it's also great to get paid for things. So yeah. it's 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 all Thanks. about it's all about the divine balance but like we've had conversations before sometimes and I've had conversations with other artists before sometimes where I'm saying I would rather have this content pushed farther than to get money in my pocket now because I'm thinking and investing in myself long term and getting myself somewhere long term. So I'm not as worried about instant payoffs. I'm more worried about long term payoffs. Now it depends on where you are and what it is you're trying to do as to what you should do. Do I think in general producers deserve to get paid? Yes, it's a lot of work and yes, it's a lot of upfront investment. But sometimes working for free can be what gets you paid later on. And there's a lot of interviews with a lot of big producers as well as artists who will say that. That sometimes, even Dave Pensado, for example, has said that. Sometimes you just gotta grind and get yourself to that level where there's lots of people coming trying to pay you. And so sometimes it takes a little bit to get to that. So it depends on where you are in the game and what you're trying to get out of it. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's pretty much how I got started up with actually. Is I worked for free for I think two or three years before I charged for my first studio session. And doing that, of course, well, I got to work with an artist who ended up being relatively big within our local community. Mm -hmm. That's Butu. Blessings. <laughs> I think Check it out. Blessings, Butu. It's, yeah. a it's a great song. <laughs> it's a great song. I started working with him, and there was another artist from my high school. His, his name is Arnaro. I was pretty much working with them, recording them, producing, mixing for them for free for, a, I think, about two or three years before I charged for my, my first session. And both of them actually happened to get some uh, some relative success within the area. And then that actually led to me more, I guess this is more so for like as me as an engineer than a producer, but that led to me um, getting actually to engineer for other local artists and then they would go on and then tell people that they were working with or that they were friends with or to come over here and work with me because they know that I'm passionate about what I do and I can get them a really good sound. And similar things can of course apply. That was more so for my career as an engineer. Even things for specifically as a, as a producer. Yeah, it's not always bad to actually work for, for free with an artist. One, I, I don't want to repeat everything that they, that they said, but I do want to share one other perspective as well again. Mm -hmm. So a lot of artists will say that since they don't make any money off of their music it doesn't make sense for them to, to to pay for a beat but then my counter argument with that is that it's not the producer's fault that the artist doesn't necessarily know how to monetize the craft now it's, it's good that we if we know how if a producer can actually educate an artist on how to monetize the craft that's cool on us 
but also I don't feel like a producer should be expected to work for free specifically for the case that an artist doesn't know how to make money from their music. Because in reality, the, w the same way that there are multiple ways for producers to make money from their music, like selling beats online, selling uh, loops to other producers, selling drum kits, even putting out our own music, just to name a few, merchandise. Hey, <laughs> represent, represent. Shameless plug, shameless plug. Are you a, producer are you a bedroom producer? No more key production. You probably want to rock this. Writer, uh, understand Christ follower. <laughs> so, the same, the same way, like I said, that there are multiple ways for producers to generate revenue, it's the same for artists. So not only can they make money from putting their songs out on Spotify, they can get a lot of money actually from performing, mm -hmm. which is a lot of Biggest people make. Biggest one. Yes. Especially now that COVID's uh, dying back. <laughs> it's, 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 you know. We're almost there. Almost there. Almost there. But performing is a big part of it. They're also going to, of course, sell merch. Selling features mm -hmm. to other artists. If they build up their brand big enough to where they can add tr add value to them. Or they can make social media content and then get sponsored from other companies. If, if they're like a singer, even rappers, they can even record their own voice samples and then even sell them as, as sample packs. Different artists. I don't see a lot of artists doing that type Back. of stuff. Like Kara, for example, on yes. Splice. You let, her song got ended up on a... Platinum, I think, record with Kashmir? Yep. I can't remember. Yeah, Kashmir. Uh, yeah, so she had a platinum record off of a vocal sample that she put up on Splice. Or even even if you like, if you make a Patreon or OnlyFans or... <laughs> there are, there are I know, I know, I know, I know, I know what artists... But there are artists that do it yes. with actual only music, non-sexual content. Yes, so I've, I've, it's possible as well. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm, I didn't pay for it, but I do know of <laughs> a handful of artists in all seriousness though. Um, the point of that I'm trying to say is that there are multiple ways for an artist to actually generate revenue from their music. We didn't even touch into things like royalties and, and things like that, but or in getting the, your music placed in TV and film. One thing I'd like to say is also if you're saying, oh, well, I don't know how to make money off of Minecraft, so you need to work for me for free. Well, I didn't know how to make money off Minecraft That's for a very long time, so what did I do? I got a job, yeah. and I hustled, and I bought my equipment, and I paid for my lessons, and I spent the time, money, and effort in order to get myself to a certain exactly. point. So that's not really a great excuse. If you really want something, you're gonna find a way to make it happen. Exactly. There are things out there that you are gonna have to do that you don't want to do just so you can achieve the goal that you want to achieve. So if you wanna see results, you are gonna work those double shifts at that retail store, or you are gonna fall asleep standing up at a restaurant as a waiter. Like, I mean, if you really want it, you're gonna get it. Yeah. The reason why I brought that up in the first place was to say that if an artist approaches you and says that you need to work with them for free for the specific red, reason, red black. Red black. <laughs> yeah. red for black. that specific reason, you have to know your own worth, know your value. And if you, especially if you are someone who may be a bigger influence than, than that artist, you don't necessarily need to sell your, your services for less than what you believe that you deserve. Now, are there situations where it can be beneficial to work with an artist without getting paid up front? Yes, if they're an artist who actually works hard. If you that's think that big, that's a big yes. thing, exactly. they're putting in the work as well. Yes, it's definitely showing showing that. results, showing uh, progress. Like you're trying, like you you learn something different the next time, the yeah. next session you guys are doing. You're making. You're both getting better together. Exactly. That even on a monetary level, if an artist who has like three monthly listeners on Spotify asks you to work with them for free, is it gonna be worth it? Possibly not if you don't really see if they're going to go anywhere further or if you see that their work ethic isn't strong because then they're only getting three monthly listeners what maybe like a max of 10 streams a month and that's penny, not even pennies actually. You also want to see, like we were saying that they're working, you also want to see that they're trying to take this into something bigger, albeit a bigger audience or full time. Yes. If they don't have ultimate clear goals laid out for themselves as an artist, then chances there are they're not gonna do the the grimier stuff that people don't want to do in order to get themselves to the next level. So it also check that they're that they have those that your values align is exactly. one of the biggest things. Make sure that your values align. You're both trying to get to the same spot. Then you're working together as a team. Because if it's free, you're as a team. If you're, there's money involved, then it's client and then it's consumer and it's a different relationship. Exactly. So also one thing I want to add on that too is let's say an artist who has 100,000 monthly listeners on Spotify and they want to work with you, but maybe maybe not necessarily they can't afford to pay you up front, but maybe you just both reach an agreement where you're maybe just going to split the revenue 50-50 for like master royalties and, and publishing. It's not going to be the same amount of money up front, but since they have 100,000 monthly listeners today, maybe five months from now that doubles or triples, and then you actually could potentially get more money off of that long term, or maybe even just, or definitely even more exposure. So there are situations where it can be helpful to actually work for free. Whether you're, if you're still on the come up 
and you just need experience, you need to build up your portfolio, you need to build up your knowledge of your craft, or if you happen to be connected with other artists who are actually really serious, have the same work ethic as you, those are situations where maybe you don't, maybe not necessarily don't want to, but maybe it won't be as wise to charge an upfront fee. Uh, just it, so you get the opportunity. Yeah, if it ruins that relationship. If that relationship is worth more than, than that money up front, don't ruin it. But of course, there are situations where it still would make sense. Like if you're someone who does want to focus on selling beats online, you can give away free beats to get people on your email list actually, or just to get that initial traffic to your website at first. But it's for someone who specifically wants to sell beats online, you do need to charge for them because otherwise, like if people are just downloading your stuff for free, they're most likely nine out of 10 times, they're not gonna give you the royalties and stuff that you deserve. If they buy it, they are more likely to, but if you just literally give stuff away for free and hope people are gonna cut you a check after they blow up. And be genuine. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, definitely safeguard yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To wrap that up, there are benefits to working for free and also to charging what you're worth. And it really can just depend on the very specific situation that you happen to be in. So use great discernment. Listen to your tummy. <laughs> Do whatever your gut tells you. Whatever your gut tells you. How does it make you feel? Exactly. It is, yeah, it's a tough decision. Though. It really is. It's, it's it really sticky. Is. There's a reason why we stuck on that one for a while. Yeah. Because it's, it's definitely a hard decision. We're passionate about it. Yeah. <laughs> Very. Can you like zoom in right here? <laughs> passionate. <We're> passionate. <laughs> so this this is a really good question because like, you're a great example of this. Do you think it's important for artists to understand the terminology that producers use? For example, do you think it's important for an artist to know some terms like how, like what an EQ does or what what does compression mean or reverb? Oh, yo, so important. <laughs> this like is the great I, question. This is this is perfect for me. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know. <laughs> um, he's he's so, lying. Um, okay, so I know when I when I first started, I was working with this dude named Breeze, the Urban Maestro. He is dope. He got me started on everything. He taught me my first word in the studio, and it was quantize. Mm. I had no idea what that was. I thought he was like trying to shake me for money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing not. <laughs> I didn't think that. But like, like did my research for like the next session I had with him. I want to be like, yo, I know what quantize is, so I, I better know this. I want to know that. I want to know this. Um, what's it, what's EQ? What's what does leveling do? Like, or what is a reverb? Like, I know, like, I heard echoes in songs and stuff like that, but I never knew what a reverb was, so I'm just like, okay, I'm learning now. So terminology really does speed up the process in a studio session, and it is essential, and it would definitely help your engineer or producer out so they know exactly what idea you're trying to come across, like, what, what is coming out of your mouth. Because if you tell them the wrong thing, like, if you're, if you're like, I want this flower to be more yellow than that flower, they're going to be like, I don't know, because you didn't use the right terminology. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have the like the best communication within a work environment. Yeah, and I, I would say that's part of, from a producer's perspective, that's kind of part of what we need to deal with is uh, partly with educating, but also partly with understanding uh, what does crunchy sound like or uh, what is smoother crunch. sound like. I, I needed to have more crunch or something. You know, it, it's, you really have to know your tools and know what it is you're doing and be able to take a, a couple words, translate that to a feeling and translate that to, oh, okay, I'm gonna use decapitator on this setting with this amount of drive and that's gonna achieve that sound. Or I want it to sound like it's underwater. Okay, well then I'm gonna high pass it. So part of it is our job to be able to be that intermediary to be able to translate their vision because they haven't put as much time, hours and energy into learning all these tools to be able to communicate it. But I will say, some of my favorite artists to work with, like Dean, like Gonzalo, are people that have put a little bit of time into understanding what some of this stuff means so that he can tell me, like, oh, hey, I want this band pass because he's worked on some of his own productions and band pass stuff. And it may, definitely makes the process a little bit a little bit quicker. Um, one one thing sure. too, artist, if you're watching this, please know what a BPM is. <laughs> so if you, <laughs> if you ever go to your engineer or producer, it would help them out greatly. If you know what it is, and you know what the BPM is, either it's gonna be 80, it's gonna be 90. Those are the most comfortable ones people work with. But it's small, but it goes a long way. It saves time, I feel. It shows that you care. Yeah. I mean, it, in a producer, in producer's mindset, they're like, I could've found it. But it, in their head, they're like, oh, he told me what it is, he's prepared, I like that. He shows, shows that, he's care, that he cares. I about. definitely love when an, if an artist prepares. Brush. 
like I would take I would take someone to brunch yeah. if they knew yeah. the key to the, the, the song. <laughs> the key of the song. Um, I will buy you mimosas. <laughs> you tell, you tell me the key and the BPM when you walk in. Dang, he knows All how right. many bars the hooks and the verses are. Oh, that's huge. That's another thing I, I will say is knowing knowing your arrangement. I've worked with a lot of people that maybe they give me a verse that's 20 bars or they give me uh, something else that's like 12 bars or something. Knowing how something is arranged can definitely be Preparation helpful. for a session is like the best thing in the world. Absolutely. Like one, one thing on me is like I love working as efficiently as possible, not rushing things necessarily, but you know we all have our own schedules. Uh, a lot of us work and have uh, have another job outside of just doing music. Maybe even if you are someone who works full or does production full time, you probably have multiple clients and artists, maybe even other companies and stuff that you're that you're working with. So productivity and being able to work as fast as possible, not to the point where you're rushing, but um, being able to work as fast as possible and knock out tasks is really important. So while it's not necessarily realistic for a producer to expect an artist to know everything about production or engineering the same way that you do, I personally think it helps when an artist can walk in the studio and be like, hey, yo, I need the lows in my voice taken out a bit more or accentuated a bit, or I want a reverb instead of an echo, or I want an echo instead of a reverb. They have different things like that. Because I'm always trying to think of ways to work more efficiently. So if you happen to be a producer who does work with other artists, I would actually encourage you to share some of that knowledge with them. Not Maybe not super in depth because I've tried to explain some things to some artists and then they were like, definitely don't get too sciencey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Small words. <laughs> not too many. If, if, yeah, if a five or 10 year old could understand, if you can explain it to that level, that, that'll help them a lot. Yeah, so I mean, there are, there are little things like, if you can explain, okay, like BPM, if you can tell an artist, hey, it would help a lot if, when you send the beat, also send the BPM or maybe the key signature if they happen to be a singer before the session, and then that way we can load it up and it's ready to go, all you need to do is hit record. If you can educate them on how to do that, or where to find that if they, like, for example, if they buy beats off of BeatStars, a lot of them Should actually do have the key on there. Yeah. Or the, the tempo, both really. Um, <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I just had like a, I'm just, I have a wonderful imagination. <laughs> Continue. If you're able to educate them on like, just, just re like honestly, just really simple things. Like what's the BPM, what's reverb, what's delay, what else? What'd you say? <laughs> BPM, black, black people matter. Black people matter. That's, that's your BPM. That's BPM right there. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you're able to educate them on, on simple things like that, in an ideal situation, your studio sessions will go over a lot smoother, um, it'll be a lot more efficient. Yeah. Passion uh, and uh, inspiration come and go very quickly. So the better that you are at what you do to be able to capture everything in as little time as possible, the more you're gonna have. Yes. And the less revisions you're gonna have. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I ask this question to artists all the time to figure out what gaps are in their career or in the workflow that other producers can fill. So what's something that you wish you had as an artist? Money. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? that's not a question. Money. <laughs> I wish I had not just like bread wise, but I wish I had like the idea and I had the direction because I'm at the, not, well, not me personally, but I feel like some artists kind of just like get lost and they, when they, they are trying to find that sound and that is really them, that, that they feel is genuine and that they want to push towards the public and, they, and something that will make them successful. Like, I feel like we're all looking for that one sound and that one song that is going to like just help us out. Like Old Town Road to Lil Nas over the top. So I guess artists are always looking for that direction and that song that's gonna help them feed themselves and their family. So yeah. Could you repeat the question? Oh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't want me really apply oh, okay, to you as much, okay. but like, okay, no like, like what, what do you think, <laughs> are the artists that you talk to, would you say that there's something that they, that they need? Do you feel like there's a gap that we as producers can fill that maybe we're not considering? I think uh, I think one thing that we can definitely bring as producers is consistency. Mm. And while a lot of times, especially once you get up to a bigger level, you're gonna mix it up. A lot, a lot of things to get people to a certain level is had, having a consistent sound. So That's working true. with with one person or buying beats from one person or a couple people or as, as long as as an artist you have an idea of the general sound you're going for. That way, when people are coming into your profile, and this is I'm all over the place. <laughs> if people are coming into your profile, but especially as as an artist only then they can they say they found your song on some playlist that's a certain style and then they come to your profile they're more likely to like your other stuff and that's the reason why a lot of artists will have multiple um names for themselves like what's a good one tara reed i think and um i can't remember the, 
the dubstep names that he's under off the top. I'm gonna remember as soon as this ends. But regardless, anyway, he's a dubstep producer as well as a rapper. And those are two different niches. So um, I would say knowing what lane it is you wanna be in and, and getting the best at what that is, whatever mm. that is. Also, I just thought about this. This is one of my, it's my pet peeves. One thing I feel like some artists, it may not be all of them, but some artists are lacking or they're, they're missing the idea of what they want to do. So some some artists are like, oh snap, if I just did that, I need to do this. But then there are some artists who are just like, oh no, I didn't finish writing my verse. So they go into a session not prepared. So it's, there's some sessions, sessions where you like, you produce a song and you write a song right then and there. But then there's sessions where like, you produce a song and you have time to write and you're like, all right, let's have a session. And you just go in there not knowing what to say. So you're not only are you wasting your time, you're wasting Zoe's time. You're wasting Steven's time, because it's like, okay, we well, just set all this up, so it's like, what are you gonna do next, bro? I'm not the one singing on the mic, you are. That's, that's what they're thinking, so it's like, okay, I'm still charging for the hour. <laughs> I mean, yep. I mean yep. like, yeah, so like, you can, you can either be like, hey man, can you help me write this? No, I'm a fucking click. Like that, like, Zoe will be like, hey bro, you make the music. <laughs> <laughs> so like I feel like if you and also when it and vocally be prepared like if you mm, warm ups if you want to like really produce the best product be prepared drink your tea <laughs> but just be vocally prepared for your sessions like if you're gonna do stacks make sure the stacks are twins or or either sisters or distant cousins but they gotta look alike like they gotta sound alike if you if you want to have the best music learn train and find that key Make sure you know exactly what you want to do so you can have the best quality. And not just like mixing wise, but just performance wise. Mm -hmm. If you're live, you got to perform these songs live. If you can't do it in a studio setting, don't do it live. Like you be prepared, mm -hmm. prepare yourself, sing in the shower, sing in the mirror. That's just preparation. It's just like one thing I feel like some people lack in. If you want to be unique, if you want to stand out, if you want to catch up and get ahead, that's the number one thing. Artists and producers are entrepreneurs, specifically in producers in this case. As an entrepreneur, you need to know what lane you can fill or what needs, rather, that you can fill for the people who you're trying to serve. In this case, producers are serving artists with primarily beats, of course, maybe mixing, but that's also the thing. If you don't talk to artists, you don't know what needs also may need to be fulfilled. For example, I talk to artists who they may need a manager or maybe they may think that they need to be signed by a label and they don't know how to promote their music on their own. And then someone like me who I educate myself on, on various things within music outside of just solely production, mm -hmm. I can add value to an artist by saying, hey, you know what? Maybe also I can help you edit videos or I can help mix your songs if you, maybe you record your own stuff and don't know how to mix. Or even on the biz business side of things, I'm definitely I'm not a manager, but I can educate an artist on maybe how to get connected with the manager. Or maybe, maybe they're not ready for a manager. I can explain to them, you know what, here's actually what a manager does, and here's what you can do on your own right now to get do to the point. To get to that point where you need a manager, or even outside of that, just doing that work for, for yourself. If uh, right now, if right now you don't have the budget to afford a manager. As producers, we need to know other ways that we can add value to artists in addition to making beats or doing production because it's really easy for an artist to find a beat. You can literally go on YouTube right now, type in ASAP Rocky type beat, got a beat right there. Easy. But if you want to stick out amongst the millions of other producers who are doing the same thing that you may be doing, which could be putting beats out on YouTube or SoundCloud and trying to sell them that way, you need to find other ways that you also can add value to an artist. And that will give you potentially even a, a higher paying customer or even a loyal customer because now they know, okay, I know to go to El Marquis because he's really educated on the music business side of things. So if I have a question on how ASCAP and BMI and song trust and sound exchange work, I can go to him. Or they want to go to Vibe for a specific thing, whether it's like, even if it's like just a specific thing on, like a, on sound because he's really good at doing textures in his beats. If you can find a unique way to add value to other people, you become more valuable. Potentially more people could, will want to work with you. Maybe you could even find additional sources of revenue. Like let's say if you are a graphic designer or a video editor, that could be an additional service that you offer and maybe sell as well. So yeah, it's, I think it's really important for us as producers to talk to artists, ask them what are other things that they need in addition to production. And then if you are able to either provide the service for them, that's fire. 
if you're able to point them in the right direction to someone who can do that for them, even that spire, even that can still lead to a potential customer and a more long lasting and loyal customer. Yeah. And you're you're planting seeds with every one of these interactions. They're they're gonna remember you. So it's having that free value that you're giving up front that gets them anything. If they got any value out of that, they're gonna remember you any time that they are receiving that value more in the, you know, in the future. From any advice or whatever it is that, that you gave out for free, they're gonna remember you for that. So as a producer, definitely, you know, study funnels, give out value for free, look into email marketing. And if you're really trying to look into business, a lot of the best business people are outside of music and you can learn about business outside of just music business you because a lot of stuff that's you know in that niche they don't have as great an understanding as the guy that built like a three billion dollar business so read books from ceos and other people that are very successful in business if you want to learn business or find yourself a mentor that's been life-changing for me personally so that pretty much wraps up all the questions today we covered a huge variety of topics thank you all so much for watching and for tuning in i really hope that you were able to even if it was just one topic that you needed to hear i really hope that you are able to get value up out of this and just find different ways to apply all the topics that we talked about to your own career not everything that we said is gospel not everything that we said you need to follow verbatim and the reason why i have multiple people on here is of course to get different perspectives for example i like leasing beats some artists they don't like it whatsoever and they only do things in the studio with another producer it's good to share different perspectives it's good to take notes on different things and just figure out different ways to apply this knowledge to your own career so that's the whole reason why I like interviewing different artists, all from different backgrounds, all with different workflows. So that way, even I can learn things from, from this. When I look back at this, edit it later, maybe there's something I'll pick up on when I edit the video, it's maybe something that I missed, and then I can apply it to my own career. So to wrap up, Dean, you just recently dropped a project. To, uh, shout out your project really quick. Oh uh, yeah, uh, my name is Dean right now. I dropped a project called What's Up Dean. What's up um, Dean? <laughs> I'm dead. It literally, what's up, Dean? Um, on all platforms, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, you can find it anywhere. It's my baby. It's been two years working on that thing, and I love it. So I hope you're gonna love it too. Please do check it out. And hey, vibe, uh, what are what are you currently working on? And are there any projects or anything that you would like to shout out as well? Well, it may be out when this comes out. I have not announced this anywhere yet, but on August 31st, I do have a music video dropping with Juan Travolta, as well as a single coming out. I have another single, Give Me Love, that should be out within the next two uh, months or so. Another yeah. single, uh, Moonlight, coming out at some point in the next couple months. Definitely a lot of things that are coming out this year, as well as projects that I'm working on with this guy. We do not have dates on those yet, but we do have a lot of stuff coming out. If you want to find me, lilvibes.wave on Instagram, vibervibemusic.com. You can reach out to me wherever Ever. And yeah, I produce, mix, master, and record and work with artists. So if you're looking for a unique sound, this guy is talented. He's really talented. Facts. And this guy. And, and the this last guy. The, these guys. <laughs> the, the last thing that I'd say to, from what you had said is we're here all trying to help each other. And you can learn so much more as a group, as a team with more people than you can on your own. So find other people that are trying to work with you and work with them and grow together. And uh, it doesn't have to be all cutthroat. It, there's enough for everybody here to eat. There are so many producers online making money. There are so many engineers. There's what, like at least seven studios probably within a 15 mile radius of here. Yeah, yeah for real. And we all work, but we all have different customers and stuff. So I don't fret about it, like different genres. All different genres, we all different specialities, and doesn't, we don't have to like fight with each other over the same artists. Like there are even more artists out there than there are engineers. So I mean, this community, we try to like just share knowledge with each other, connect with each other. To specify, we're talking about the local you know, DMV mu uh, music scene, and of course that extends out to why I do stuff like this on the online community. So Dean, where can people find your music as well as your social media? Uh, my social media is what's up, Dean. So literally, what up. Dean, so it's not what's up, what's up. Um, you can find me on Instagram at that. Find my music under the name Dean Ray now, D E A N R A Y N E L L. So definitely check me out. All that will be in the description below. And vibe, uh, I know you said this a moment ago, but just say it again one more time for the people. Where can people find your music, your website, and your social media? So I'm vibe revive music. Dot com. Also, Vibe Revive on all platforms and lilvibes.wave on social media. Although, if you search Vibe Revive, I should come up because that's my name on there. So, find me there. It'll be in the description. Let's get it popping. Got it. So, thank you both so much for this interview. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. You already know what it is. My name is El Marquis of El Marquis Productions. Hit the bell. Dean Raynell of Dean Raynell. Hit, hit the bell.
Bye, 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 bye. Hit the bell, though. What's Gucci, <laughs> baby? Going great. God bless. Peace out. You can't tell me what I can do. You can't tell me what I can or I can't do. You can't tell me what I can do. You can't tell me what I can or I can't do. What do I do with my hands again? <laughs>